you know, I, I, honestly, this is so infuriating. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know if I care what the process is that these judges are arriving at. Whatever it is, it's flawed. I can tell you that much. I mean, D- David put it well. It's, this is a different process for, for, for this person. We have decided that he gets his own private court of justice. He has a private plane. He has, a, he has private clubs that he lives in. You know, apparently, you know, he, he basically fashioned himself his own private militia to try to take over the Capitol. You know, now he's getting uh, his own private system of justice. This is an absolute travesty. It would not happen for anybody else. Anybody else, it would be like, sorry, buddy, you lost. Pay up. For him, he gets his own set of rules. Legally, Tristan, how is that done? We just saw it. They just decided that they just, you know, the appellate court has now just decided they're going to swoop in and just change it. And that's it. And now the, uh, the AG's office can now try to go up above them, I believe. You know, I don't know what the details are because you just told us. I'm guessing this is coming from the first department, appellate division, first department. That's the intermediate mm-hmm. court here in New York uh, that would be issuing a decision here. Uh, I don't know if there is a remedy for the AG's office to go up to uh, the Court of Appeals, which is our high court here in New York, and try to get them to, uh, to basically countermand this order. Uh, but in my view, this is without knowing more, unless there's some sort of other extenuating circumstance that we're going to learn here, this appears to be an absolute gross miscarriage of justice. In a recent appearance on MSNBC, legal expert Tristan Snell exhibited a deeply emotional reaction, indicative of the prevailing frustration and despair within our legal system, perceived as riddled with injustice and inequality. Rather than viewing Snell's response, Objectively, it's often interpreted as a manifestation of partisan bias clouding the assessment of legal matters. Snell's assertion regarding preferential treatment toward Donald Trump hints at broader concerns regarding the abuse of power and the erosion of democratic norms. While such critiques are commonplace among Trump detractors, they lack concrete evidence to substantiate claims of preferential legal treatment. Snell's evident frustration may stem from the perceived dissonance between ideological convictions and the tangible legal outcomes, fueling a sense of injustice and indignation. Moreover, Snell's statements seem to underscore a broader trend of sensationalism and partisan leanings, particularly in media coverage of legal proceedings involving public figures. To better understand Snell's perspective, it's imperative to critically analyze media narratives and approach them with a healthy dose of skepticism. Recognizing the influence of ideological biases in shaping perceptions of legal decisions.